What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna to share five lighting tips whenever you're working in UEFN, AKA Fortnite Creative 2. Now I'm gonna get started off by coming over here in my outliner and right here where I see UEFN, I'm actually just gonna turn this off right here, this day sequence, just so I'm starting totally blank. Now the first thing I'm actually gonna do is show you guys how we can make an immersive material in here. In which in order to do that, actually, let me come up here to my window. I'm gonna come down here to place actors and this is a window we could easily find some of our items. Like right here, I'm just gonna add in a sphere, like so. And then I'm gonna come down here, my details panel, and I'm just gonna zero it out so it's in the center right here. Double click on it, and it's zoomed in here. So now what I'm gonna do is down here, inside of my content browser, I'm just gonna right click, and then I'm gonna to come to material, and I'm just gonna name this one glove. Now with this material here, I'm gonna double click on it, and that's gonna bring up our blueprint window for our material. Now the first thing I'm going to do is right here where it says a missing material, I'm just going to left click, drag this out, and it's going to bring up this window in which I'm going to type in multiply. And once you type in a few letters, it's going to know what you want. So I'm just going to click on this one right here. And now we have a multiply node in here. Now the first one I want to add in, in the A slot, I'm going to left click, slide it over. It's going to be a constant three. So I'm going to type in constant. And once I do, you see we have a couple of options here. I'm gonna pick this one right here because this is gonna give us an RGB in which if you double click right here, we can actually select the color. So I'm just gonna bring it up to maybe like blue right there. And then under my B slot, I'm gonna do a constant one. So there's a couple of ways that you can actually add in a constant. Like if I hit down a one key on my keyboard and left click, that's gonna drop it in. Same thing if you want a constant two, you hold down the two on the keyboard, left click, and it's gonna drop it in. So if I hold down the one on my keyboard, left click, there we go. And that's how we got that. Or you could have just left click and dragged it out and you could type it in there as well. So I'm gonna drag this under my B slot and you can see that my material automatically went gray. And that's because this is gonna control the value of brightness for our color right here. So if I bring this value up to like maybe 10, now you can see that we have a glowing material right here. All we have to do is click save. And then I'm gonna bring this over so I can exit this out. And now I'm just gonna click and drag it onto my sphere. And now we have a glowing material within our scene here. Now the next step from here, tip number two, is we can actually control the glow using the post process volume. Now going back to my actors window, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna come to visual effects and I'm gonna add in a post process volume. So I'm just gonna left click and drag that in here. And now you can actually see we have a volume within our viewport here in which I'm gonna actually zero this out down here in my location. You hit this right here, that's gonna zero it out. And now we could go about this two ways. So we have a volume right here. You can actually see the cube right there. And that means that anytime the camera or the player goes into that volume, that's where the changes are gonna happen. But if we want to have the volume kind of encompass our entire world here, you would come down here into the search and you would type in UMB. And right here where it says infinite extent unbound, you wanna click this on. And now that means that anything that we do here in a post pros volume is gonna encompass our entire world. So the first thing I wanna do is come down here to Bloom. And if I turn on intensity, if I turn this up, you can actually see we're controlling the intensity of our glow there. So I'm just gonna leave it at default for right now. And then if I scroll further down in here, down into exposure, this is a way that we can actually control the overall exposure of our world. So the first thing I'm gonna control is the exposure composition. And then down here from my min brightness and my max brightness, I'm gonna hit these with values of one. And then my speed up and speed down, I'm actually gonna make these, actually, let me show you what these do. So the whole exposure thing basically is like, if you're inside of a house, you know, like whenever your eyes are adjusted to a certain brightness and then you go outside the house and your eyes take a second to adjust, Fortnite is gonna try to simulate that. And so if you don't wanna have it do that exposure thing, you can easily turn it off, but turn it off to speed up and to speed down on that. So let me come over here and actually give you an example of what I'm talking about. So if I come over here, the post process, I'm gonna turn this off for right now. And then right here where we see day sequence, I'm gonna turn this on. And you can see how the exposure like got really bright. That's because when you go outside, your eyes need time to adjust to the brightness outside. And so in order to get around that, I'm actually gonna turn on the post process volume, speed up, I'm just gonna hit zero, speed down, hit zero. And then the min brightness and the max brightness is one to one. So now if you do anything like that, like if I come back over here, you can see it's not doing that exposure thing anymore. So again, if you wanna have it only be inside your volume, you have control of that as well, but I'm doing it overall on my scene here. 
Now the next thing we're going to add in, tip number three, we're going to bring in a directional light, which is going to play as our sun. So back over here under place actors, I'm going to click on lights right here. And you can always do it over here too. So we have this little cube that says quickly add the project. You can select here and you're going to have all your place actor stuff here as well. But I'm going to stick with the panel. I'm going to left click and drag the directional light into my scene here. And you can see it's extremely bright right now. And that's because in Unreal Engine, by default, the intensity should be 3.14. And that's what the sunlight is supposed to be inside of Unreal. And this is going to give you more realistic lighting. Now, if you want to control the direction of the sun in here, I'm just going to click on something random in my scene here. And I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and L. And you see that we have the sun dial here. Now, I'm not going to click anything on my mouse. I'm actually just going to drag it around. And you can see that it's moving the sun dial. And it's moving our light, which I always think is really neat how we could control that like that. And that way, we don't have to dial in any numbers. We could just work in real time. And get our lighting in as we want now for our next tip i'm going to show you guys how we can bring in hdrs in the fortnite creative and actually with this website right here polyhaven.com you actually have a whole plethora of free hdrs that we could use and so again that's polyhaven.com i'm going to come down here to where we have hdrs i'm going to browse hdrs and you can see that we have a whole lot of free hdrs that we could use in our scene if you look over here on the left hand side let's maybe do a disguise we have a whole bunch of different kind of skies. We could do natural light. We could do partly cloudy, which let me actually click on that one. And let me just download something random here. So this one, this one actually looks pretty nice here. So I'm going to click on this one here. And then up here in the right hand corner, I'm probably going to stick with 4K. Make sure that it's HDR. And I'm just going to click download here. And once again, these are all completely free to use. So download away. And now with my HDR downloaded, I'm just going to left click and drag it into my content browser down here. And now you can see that we have it down here. Now you see this little star here. You should know by now, but I'm just going to click save all and that's going to make that go away. Make sure everything is saved in here. Now the next thing I want to add in is a skylight so that we can use our HDR. So right here inside of my place actors, I'm going to left click, drag in my skylight like so. And then down here inside of my details panel, where it says source type, I'm actually going to click on this right here and I'm going to use specified cube map. Now this is going to allow us to click and drag our HDR into our scene. And now you can see our scene is lit by our HDR as well. So let me actually come over here and turn off my directional light so we can see what's going on with just the HDR. So if you come down here, we can actually change out the brightness. So intensity scale, bring this down to like 0 0.10. So you can see that this is actually being lit by this right here. So let me come down to like point, let's say like 0.4 is nice. And we can always use our directional light to fill in everything as well. But that's a way that we can actually use HDR as the light inside of our scene here. So hopefully that helps you guys get jump started whenever you're working inside of UEFN. If you want any more tips and tricks, make sure you go to the rest of my channel. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.